make their presentation. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Michelle Jones. Um, I am with a company called RIM Architects in San Francisco. We've been working on the island for probably the last six to seven years, starting with the WIDA project and then supporting Lenar Mare Island on various historic rehabilitation projects, including the Savage and Cook recent distillery project. And I have with me Bill Lanay. Good evening, commissioners. I'm. Uh 21-year veteran of the Navy, all of which was in submarines, and six of those years were aboard Mariano G. Vallejo, 1969 to 1975. And Bill, you're representing the Save Our Cell Committee. I am. I'm the uh, head of that committee right now. I have with me Jack Tamargo, who's the only surviving original member of the committee. We've had a couple of gents uh, pass away and one retire for medical reasons. Another unable to be here, but uh, this has been a, a long road. We've, we've been at this about 10 years, and I, I didn't know Bill Tawika had retired, but he can attest to what we've been through. All right, so I will walk through in just a little bit more detail a, a narrative of the experience that we're hoping will be created with this initial instigator of the sale placed in the Ways 2. Um, the, our intent is to have a strong pedestrian connection between the waterfront area here by Building 117 that will then wrap around the gantry into what will become this future public plaza where we'll have a lot of visitation and activity there to appreciate the historic aspects of the area. And starting down at the end of the waterfront, we would have some informational kiosks. And then you'll see this graphic chain graphic that runs all the way through here as we see that this, this will help guide people through this whole experience. Um, as Michelle had mentioned in Ways 1, we have some future phases, but for the context of, of everything that might happen in this region, we wanted to provide a little bit of information on what the future might be there with the green space here and then um, potentially some activities that connect the land to the water um, through some, some activities happening at the end of Ways 1. Focusing into Ways 2, the area that is outlined in the yellow is the intent for this application. And it is focused on this memorial of the sale that will be placed on this platform that can then be appreciated by people to come um, sit, enjoy, read some history, and truly um, soak in um, uh, what has um, transpired around the area with the museum, with future development, um, rehabilitating some of the existing buildings, the framing the gantries at each side, and then off into the waterfront. Um, in addition to the sale, we're looking at representing a graphic down on the base of the pavement of the USS Vallejo, which is about 425 feet long. So this is true to scale. And there would be an imprint down on the pavement so that people could truly get a sense of the size of that vessel. And then the sail is actually located where it would normally be within, within the Vallejo. Um, I mean, go on here. We're providing here additionally a little more um, information in detail about how this would all be situated, located, a sense of scale, um, so that there's some, some realism to what the intent is here. Up at the upper right here is a graphic of a very similar sale that's up in Bremerton. And, um, and the intent here is to represent some of the graphics that would then be introduced onto the sale. And I'm going to let Bill talk about that a little bit. Um, around the, the sale, this platform would include a wooden bench. Uh, we're hopeful that we could find some reclaimed wood on the island and clad a bench ut utilizing some of those materials. Uh, the back of the bench could be representative of some donor tiles that represent the names of those who have supported the museum, supported the sale, and, um, and are then respected and represented there. 
Um, at, the, at the front part of the seal is a platform that would um, have a graphic representation of the seal, and I'll let Bill talk about that a bit. And we're hoping that these materials are representative of materials that you would see on the island in a maritime environment, such as the steel cladding. Um, Michelle has mentioned that this platform would have some integral lighting. We're anticipating that uh, at the port side, we would have a red light, at the starboard, a green light. So it's, it's, you get this realism with some color to it as well. Um, go on to a little bit more detail. So this is a plan view. The waterfront is over to the right side of our view. Uh, this is the length of the, the imprint that would be down on the pavement, probably with some type of an elastomeric paint, something that's durable, that just gives a, gra a graphic representation to the size of that vessel. And then you can see the relationship of the, the sail platform to, the, um, to that graphic. This is an enlarged view of the, the sail itself. So it's about 43 feet. And then the platform itself extends all the way around. The benches um, are at each side so that people, a lot of people could actually gather around the sail and take the time to enjoy it. We would have some protective railings here to avoid people actually coming up and, and climbing around the sail. And, um, and then down here you'll see a section view of the platform. It's presently sitting up on some steel skids. So the intent is that the sail is still set on those skids and that we um, come around that structural steel platform and clad it with the materials. Here's a, a, a scale of a, of a human individual so you can get a sense. The sail has these wings that stick out to the side, so elevating it up on this platform actually, it also ensures that we, we don't have any head height issues there. Um, this is a front elevation where the, um, the crest is, is located at the platform and then adjacent uh, informational kiosk so people can read about the stories and the history. And this is the large uh, rendering view so that you can get the sense of the scale and the context. And I'm going to let Bill talk a little bit about the significance of some of the emblems in the seal. Okay. The, uh, in the view where the side of the Parchi sail was shown with all the E's and what have you, those are indi indicative of awards that the ship has won for excellence in various arenas, be it navigation, engineering, uh, what have you. The Parchi, as it happens, was stationed here for a number of her significant years and is the most decorated ship in the United States Navy not just a submarine, but maybe wide. Uh, I've, I've uh, prepared a couple of highlights to go over. Uh, my personal background with the island is uh, I went to crypto school here in 1972, and I retired from, from the Navy as a Master Chief working with Submarine Development Group, which was part of the what the shipyard called ocean engineering and what the Navy called special projects. And special projects, if you're familiar with Navy ease, is basically anything that's too expensive or too classified to tell the public about. So uh, that, that's the kind of stuff that was going on. Uh, and now I'm associated with Maryland Historic Park Foundation. I'm a member of the board. and. Uh, running the SOS project, which I've been doing since, I've been involved since 2011. Uh, I mentioned this has been a long struggle to get where we are now, and I consider this project important for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, we want to build a monument to the shipyard workers and the yard uh, in general that built this ship and the shipyard built the Vallejo and six other of the 41 for freedom. There were 41 fleet ballistic missile submarines uh, in the Cold War, built during the Cold War. Mare Island built seven of them. 658, they were sequ pretty much sequ sequentially numbered. The last one was 659, uh, which was uh, the Will Rogers. But nevertheless, uh, we want to honor the shipyard workers. Uh, 
the importance of what was done here during the Cold War just can't be overemphasized, in my opinion. I've mentioned the Parchy, the Richard B. Russell was always also stationed here. Uh, they were incredibly important to the outcome of the Cold War, and if you have any interest in that, I highly recommend a book called Blind Man's Bluff. It's a quick read, and about the second half of it discusses a lot of what may or may not, I can neither confirm nor deny, but may or may not have happened here at Mare Island. So, uh, We also obviously want to build a monument to the sailors that manned her for her 30-year career. Uh, she was well decorated. When she was launched, it was a huge deal here in Vallejo. If any of you were around, everybody was involved. The Chamber of Commerce donated extra money. The, the uh, boardroom had an especially nice silver service. She was a showboat. We had Formica in places that no other boat had Formica. Uh, I'm in touch regularly with a, with a uh, squadron commander who tells me that Whenever a VIP requested a tour of a submarine, if the Vallejo was in port, she was it because she was such a showboat. So I'm just bragging a little bit, but uh, I came when I came here in '72 to go to crypto school. I, you know, E5, wearing a Vallejo patch on my arm, and I quickly learned I could, if I wore that uniform into any bar in town, I couldn't put my hand in my pocket because there were people there that, oh, you're a Vallejo sailor. I mean, it was a huge deal in Vallejo. So anyway, uh, we had a reunion, a ship's reunion here in 2011 that had about 200 in attendance. Our website uh, has about 1,200 active uh, ex-crew members involved. We've raised uh, a significant amount of money to get this thing moving. We now have some additional support, and I have commitments uh, based upon finalized plans for construction. This has been going on so long, I think some of the crew think I'm full of it when I talk about we're going to build this, but uh, I think we're soon going to come to fruition. I'm hoping we will soon come to fruition. So this, this location uh, that we're proposing now is actually not far from where, she, where the sale is now. And at one point, about 2012, somebody more or less quipped, why don't you leave the sale where it is? Well, if you looked at the environment in the building ways then, as opposed to the environment now, since Savage and Cook and Lennar have been in there making all the improvements. I mean, to, I used to tell people the sale was in jail. It was behind an ugly chain link fence. It was just, there was no way I was going to deal with that as a, you know, if, if I could avoid it. So, uh, with all the improvements over there, I, this to me is, is the ideal location. Um, why would we not put it in a, in a place where the public can walk and learn something about it? Uh, I, I, I just, I don't understand uh, how we could do any better and, and be on the island. The, the parking lot idea came about because Alden Park failed, and we thought, well, let's put it someplace that we already control, we, M-I-H-P-F, you know, royal we. Uh, obviously that would have chewed up a significant amount of the parking lot and, we, and it's not very big in the first place. So when this idea came about, um, I, I was all, all on board. It just seems like the logical thing to do. And I'd be remiss if I didn't close by telling you or thanking Tom Sheaf, Laura Morgan, the City of Vallejo Planning and uh, Building Officials. I specifically had Bill Tawika in my notes not knowing he was gone. Uh, and then Nathan Bergeron, Savage and Cook of the Nimitz Group, Terry Kilgore, Michelle Jones, Aaron Hanford. Everybody has, has been with this for a long time and, and I appreciate the efforts and I humbly ask your approval. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, do the um, commissioners have any questions for the applicant, for either Michelle or Bill? Commissioner Gen. To be clear, the um, SOS is part of the foundation? Yes, sir. It's a subcommittee. Okay. Of the, the, it, everything has board of uh, director approval, and all of our committees are headed by a board member. Okay. It's a subcommittee. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. And for the designer, could you give us sort of a concept of what the gantry lighting is going to be like, or... Is it little bitty bulbs? Is it big bulbs? <laughs> it would, it would be, what is um, it? it would, from a distance, it'll look like linear LED. So it would look like strings of lights. Okay. Yeah. So it, LED fixtures are very, very efficient, long lamp life. And so it would be a very nice glow, almost like you would see strong lights in a, in a courtyard. But it, would, it wouldn't be, they wouldn't drape. They would go along the lines of the gantry so that it emphasizes the form. Okay. Okay. Uh, not glaring. No, uh, no, no. Soft light soft overall light. when you see it across the river. Yeah. Or... yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. Question. There was an earlier question about ownership of the sale that I overheard. I, to the best of my knowledge, the Navy still owns the sale, and it's the responsibility of the city. So uh, that, that, I hope that answers that question. Commissioner Riley. So is there a, a timeline now it, once this approval occurs? And, and are there any other approvals required f from anyone else? Or does this let it go ahead? I can give you a target. Our target is to be done by October of next year because that's the anniversary of the launch. And I'd like to bring the crew in mm -hmm. for a reunion and a launch, you know, a big celebration. And, and we do understand there will be a building department um, submittal and approval yes. required. Okay. And is the control room all to, together? And the, very yeah, close. Very close. Very close. I, I got probably, well, it, it will definitely be finished before the reunion. Are, so we can, if everyone's aware or, or not of the control room setup that you guys have accomplished, that's... Could you give us a quick bit on the In the addition to the is? sale, we have some of the equipment that was in the control room, including the periscope stand, three periscopes, one of which is installed and functional in the museum. It extends about 20 feet above the roof. Uh, we have the plotting table and the diving stand and the ballast control panel and the uh, torpedo fire control panel, so pretty much the layout of the control room. We expanded the depth a bit to accommodate tour groups, but uh, it's pretty much the scale. We built the uh, replicas of the uh, uh, frames, the steel frames that supported this a uh, two-inch hull. So it, we have a curved. It's all in the museum, yes, sir. And um, Bill, just as, as background information, when this ship was launched originally, was it launched from this building ways? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> You're probably shaving with it. <laughs> and the Vallejo? Pardon? And the Vallejo? Yeah, the Vallejo, it, yes, that's the ship. Oh, this is the Vallejo. Yeah, this is the Vallejo, and yeah, she was scrapped in 90... Five. Well, she was decommissioned in 95, probably scrapped by two years later, mm -hmm. up in Bremerton. Are there any other questions for the applicant? Uh, there being no other questions for the applicant from the commission at this time, I'll open the public hearing and invite any speakers. We have no speaker cards. Okay. Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, there being um, no um, speakers, I'll give one last opportunity for questions from commissioners. Oh. Commissioner Voyens. Uh It's not a question, just a tiny correction. On the location, I think uh, on the staff report, I think uh, you, the, the location is reversed. The east side is the 
Kalkini Strait, and the west is the industrial. Just a tiny, tiny correction. Thank you, duly, duly noted. Um, if there are no other questions, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing for this evening. Uh, now I'll move forward to co with commission deliberations. Are there any commissioners that would like to discuss? I think it's beautiful. Commissioner Villanis. Oh, I think it's exciting. I think it's very, it's beautiful. Uh, are we gonna have this one? This is 683. Uh -huh. Most decorated some were shipped in the Navy, but mm. it is emblematic of the, the uh, awards that will be presented on the side of the Royal appropriate to those that she earned, which I'm sorry to say you don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It will be a very nice addition to Mare Island. The, the ships, the emblem in the front of the sail there is the original ship's patch. Mm -hmm. So I had one, one comment. Mr. Riley? If, since this is, it looks like it's nearing success, and if it does, would you, after this is done, be willing to go after the Pompanito and see if we can get that back from San Francisco? <laughs> Any other commissioner deliberations? Um, if there are no more deliberations, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion for approval of um, Certificate of Appropriateness 180026. Um, this would be a motion that we adopt resolution uh, number AHLC 1809, approving Certificate of Appropriateness 180026, subject to findings and conditions contained in the resolution. Vice so Chair Bowman. Oh. So moved. Oh. <laughs> <For a> second. <laughs> <I> so, <Okay>. moved. <laughs> so moved by Vice Chair Bowman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So the resolution is adopted. Thank you very much for the presentation. It's going to be beautiful. Thank you for your hard work. The motion has passed, um, and we'll now um, let's see. Move forward with the report of the chairperson and any members of the commission. Are there any members wishing to report? And again, this is separate from our like standing subcommittees. This is just individual um, but, um, about the project. About the project. Or no, we've 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 now we've moved on. We've adopted that resolution. We're now moving on to the report, individual reports of the chairperson and members.